you, Wayne. Um, and we are today going to take a look at Venus again, real quick. Not, not a long segment, so don't worry, okay? But one of the observations that Wayne and I just made was we got this footage from a subscriber. It was a time lapse of Venus last night, Wayne. That's just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. And tell me, Wayne, what's wrong with this picture? Well, it looks like to me that number one, we can actually see the fact that it's a full frame. <laughs> and it's brighter than heck, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's stop on that for a second. When people tell me that no Venus is normal right now and that it's always been this way and everything like that, anybody over 50 years old, 40 years old is just going to, come on, man, stop lying to me. I would have noticed Venus being this bright when I was 12 years old, Wayne. Well, and I can tell you that I'm older than you are. And let me tell you, no, no. Listen, Venus is bright. It's, it's called... We know historically it's been called the morning star. We see that. We see it in the seasons. Um, we know, Steve, the luminosity of this planet is off the chart. Right. And that's the point I'm trying to make is it's a full circle here, isn't it? And this is a time lapse over five minutes. I mean, this is, this is them using a tripod, doing it properly, okay? And it, by, the other way, by the way, the other thing it does is it flashes and, and zaps and does all kinds of weird stuff. But... Check out the solar system scope. This is how much of Venus we should be seeing, Wayne. It's a crescent. That's the problem, everybody. That is the problem with this saying that this is normal. Venus is almost directly in front of the Earth, you guys, okay? We're getting to that point now where it's gonna be right in front of the Earth. We should not be seeing a 100% illuminated Venus. I know some people are gonna argue that, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own perceptions of reality. But my reality says that it's unusually bright, that it has acted very weird. It's still acting weird. And I don't think it's over yet. I don't either. Again, just wanted to point out, we're seeing this big full orb of Venus, right? We should only be seeing maybe, I don't know, an eighth of it. And I still want to see Comet Honda. <laughs> Honda's not on this thing, man. I know it. That's again, you know, and listen, I, you know, Steve, I know we covered this in a previous uh, segment, but it bears repeating again. We're going to get interaction when Honda comes by us and in, in Venus. It, it, listen, it's electrical universe and it's feeding off of the sun. That's how comets work. You know, I don't think that people really realize that comets they, they actually absorb that energy that they get off the stars. Yeah, that's why they have a tail, you guys. There would be no tail if it wasn't for the sun. And guess what a comet produces? You see, there's another, um, I think, misconception. They get the idea that comets are these dirty snowballs. Well, we found that that's not the case always. We know that these actually have mass to them. And here's the other thing. Many times the chemicals that they produce in their tails is HO. I know, right? Yeah. So you go, oh, really? So, you know, again, another misconception. The most abundant element in the universe, in my opinion, is water. It seems to be a natural byproduct of the very objects themselves. That's good news for humans. <laughs> 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 I love that. It is good news. I mean, we can go 30 days without food. Can't do three days without water. Bring but I, that water, you comets. But look then, at these comets. I mean, when you did the one, the earlier uh, segment, I wanted to comment that it looks like we're a bullseye. It looks like there's a dart game going on. And, you know. They're all, the shooting, for the, they're all shooting for the sun and missing it. <laughs> that's the problem. And, you know, if one of them hit us in the butt, because it does. It when you really pulled out further out, and you yeah. get the comets on there. I mean, it looks like it's doesn't up, it? Doesn't yeah. it? It looks like it looks like a shooting gallery. It does. Look yeah. at that. And I mean, these suckers are coming in from everywhere. I know, right? It looks like it's, it looks like we're surrounded. It reminds me of the time when I used to play darts. You know, after you get past the fourth beer, <laughs> it's it's a hazard zone. <laughs> it really is. Stay away from the dark. <laughs> That's all I got to say.
All right. Well, good segment. And again, we just wanted to point out that one very basic thing, and I'll just review. Just this is the simplest thing ever, guys. If I'm sitting on the Earth here and looking at Venus, all I should see is a little bit of a part of Venus lit up. It will be bright, but it won't be. And Steve, yeah. do we get the same thing in the 3D sky, the other uh, solar scope, the other solar uh, systems? We do. This is this is actually a very accurate. I won't pull it up right now, but it is accurate. Yeah. Yeah. So there so, you go. That's the story. Venus should not be a full, we should not be seeing a full Venus right now. Yeah, particularly with a telescope, you should be able to 